Chambers Bay right now and welcome in the World Golf Hall of Fame member, Mr. Gary Player. Good morning, sir. How are you? Morning, Damon, and morning, Gary. I'm standing in the most beautiful state in the world, Washington, Seattle here. Unbelievably beautiful. And we're playing the U.S. Open, this great championship. Uh, a group of people, the USGA, that I have great respect for. But this has been the most unpleasant golf tournament I've seen in my life. I mean, the man who designed this golf course had to have one leg shorter than the other. It's hard to believe that you see a man miss the green by one yard and the ball ends up 50 yards down in the rough. I mean, it's quite, and can you imagine, this is a public golf course. This is where we're trying to encourage people to come out and play and get more people to play the game. They're having a putt from 20, 30 foot, and they're allowing 20 foot right and 20 foot left. I mean, it's actually a tragedy. It's 7,900 yards long. Can you imagine? The world is suffering from shortage of water. Can you imagine the water this course will take? I don't know. An average golfer playing this golf course, I'm telling you, if he's a 15, 16 handicap, he's going to shoot 110 and he's not going to go home a very happy man. We've got to make golf where it's quicker, where it's more enjoyable. Get back to their family. They're away at work all week. We don't want a husband and a wife to argue because he's taking too long and neglecting his family life. We're going about it the wrong way. The golf balls, and this is happening, why are they building these crazy golf courses? Because they're trying to be defense. It's in defense of the ball going too far. We've got to cut the ball back for the pro golfer, leave it for the amateur golfer. We're making golf courses longer and longer, more expenses, more water, more fertilizer, more labor. People are designing. They're taking a beautiful golf course, making undulating greens, bunkers in front of the greens, and the folks are resigning, and golf numbers, as far as amateurs are concerned, is going down. We don't want to see that. We love the game. We've got to promote it in the right way. Professional golf has never been so healthy, but we're in trouble amateur-wise. Mr. Player, you, you mentioned the USGA. Wouldn't you certainly agree, though, that they had the best intentions? A municipal golf course with a great backstory in a part of the country that has never hosted a major championship. You understand why they chose to do this, right? I certainly do. And what they did at Beth Page tremendous to take this is what we got to do but you don't bring them to golf courses like this i mean this is devastating i mean to see a man miss the green by one yard and end up 50 yards down there pete caddies falling and hurting their ankles and the knees and players falling i mean one lady whose son's playing in the tournament she says i got lost i couldn't even find where i was going and some of the holes i couldn't see my son hitting the ball i mean this is this is terrible and to take golf look at Pebble Beach is a public golf course. The United States, USGA have chosen great golf courses. This is not indigenous to American golf. This is a British Open course. Imagine taking the British Open golf course and taking it inland. There'd be, a, there'd be an outcry. Well, Mr. Player, let, let's take this a step further. Is, is your problem larger with Robert Trent Jones Jr., the architect, or Mike Davis of the USGA in the setup of the golf course? I think you've got to give the architect the blame, but we go back on the tour when we first started playing, when old Mr. Jones, Trent Jones, designed golf courses. The players used to complain terribly because the greens were so undulating and the bunkers so deep, and it's impossible to play those golf courses. You go to Augusta, They've got undulating greens, but they're playable. You go to many of these golf courses, the greens are undulating, but playable. These greens are virtually, did you see how these pros with three putting yesterday, one after the other, there's uh, Sergio three putting from 20 foot to make the cut, I think on the last hole, I think he missed the cut. I mean, it's unbelievable seeing a man have a putt from 20 feet and he's hitting it 20 foot to the right. Imagine a weekend golfer coming here to enjoy the game. We want them to have good golf, enjoy themselves, go home happy. We've got to start building more 12-hole golf courses. And a public golf course must be built with flat greens, wide fairways, and not so many bunkers. So he can come out with his son or his daughter and encourage them to play golf. We need more rounds of golf for the golf manufacturers to make more golf. 
golf clubs, more people getting interested in this wonderful game, which is an education and enabling us to travel around the world and meet people. It's a friend-making machine. Don't let's chase people away. Do you know how many golf courses you can buy in the world today for a dollar? A dollar you can buy a golf course because we've gone the wrong way. We've made the wrong choices. Mr. Player, obviously you're very animated in defense of the amateur golfer who would have to play this golf course the other 51 weeks out of the year. But on Thursday, they had the low, they had the most rounds in the 60s in the history of this championship. You have two leaders who have a total of 135. So the the the, the golf course is attainable, it's gettable. There, there's a lot of players that have played extremely well with respect to score. Well, yes, but have you seen, they had to say, I've spoken to a few of the players, they said they've set it up a lot easier because they realize what a monster this is, and so they've had to set it up a lot easier so that the players at least have a chance of playing it. But I tell you what, there have never been so many people that missed the cut that are so happy to go home. And I'd really love that. The, I'd really love if it'd be a wonderful thing if we could take the announcers that are announcing on this tournament this week and give them a lie detector and see if they're telling the truth on television. <laughs> I'd love to see that. <laughs> Tell you what, Mr. Player, we always appreciate your honesty and your opinion. I imagine a lot of people are listening to you this morning. Thanks for your time. Have a great U.S. Open Saturday, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care. All right, the World Golf Hall of Famer, Gary Player, on a Saturday. When we come back on Morning Drive, the whole locations, what are the key ones that will determine great play or perhaps poor play today? That's coming up next on Morning Drive. I ask you, stay with us. We're back after this.